Hi guys, welcome to another Minecraft Mon tutorial. Today, got something really awesome to show you. This tutorial is all about item energy. We're going to be making all of our machines have energy. Now, I've already made this happen. I'm just going to be showing you through what I have done to make this happen because I spent quite a lot of time trying to figure out how to do this. And yeah, I've got it done. So, this doesn't have to be an item block. You can just use a normal item. This is just how I've done it. Because I've made all of my machines that have power show their power. And it can be charged up. I'll show you in game later. And yeah, so I made an item block machine. Which is an instance of item block meta. Because all of the blocks have meta. That's the two tiers. I have this add information which just sorts out a tooltip. What it does is it checks if we have to support the item stack and if it does all we do is we put the support on so we get the energy as a string the energy stored and we did a capacity you know just working out how it should look I'll show you in game then we have these three methods here which I've never used before but this is what basically draws the durability bar unfortunately CJ Core has this available just to called method that's what i was working on so where it should show the durability bar is whether it has support um the durability to show is this bit here get energy durability for display if you haven't got cd call you can obviously just copy and paste this this just makes sure it has support and then it works out the energy difference divided by the capacity that is the durability and then the rgb color for display that's just the color of the little bar and all that is, is the colour of the energy unit, but, um, oh, as RGB, which is quite simple, like so, using math helper RGB. And that's how that works, it's pretty cool. But the main way this works is, because it's a capability, we actually have to initialise a capability for the item. So that's in a method known as init capabilities. And in here... We're checking that the MBT tag has these keys, which you, which we get from the tile entity. I'll show you in block machine later. And it'll get a new capability provider. That's what it's asking for. And this is basically something that holds a capability. Now in CJ Core, you have the capability provider. You've got the energy storage here. And we just, um, we can actually just pipe these into the MBT, like I have done at the moment. And that just gets all... The energy, the capacity, the max receive, max extract, fills in this method. This creates a custom energy storage which works based off of the item stack. So instead of storing the energy inside storage, it stores it in the MBT um, of the item stack. So that's how, because you've got get energy, set energy, that all works with item stacks. Receiving it and extracting it works with it. That's what is done here. And then it just says it has the capability and you can get the capability. Which is quite cool. And obviously if we don't have that we're just going to initialise a blank capability one for energy. And obviously in the default instance we now need to actually have some energy. So that just initialises it something that has energy. And sets it as the MT tag compound of the default instance. So that's how... You actually create it using the init capabilities. You can obviously download this class just by going onto the CJ Core GitHub. It's okay just to use this because you know you don't have to always use CJ Core. Obviously, all these methods are found there. If we head over to the block machine, I have three or four different integers here: the energy capacity, max C, max extract. These are in, like defaultly these. All they do is they just provide the gets to blocks with it because it now shows two blocks, uh, one with no energy, one with full energy. Um, and as you can see here, we have the capacity, or the capacity times five. That's so you have to fill it in. So the energy cell the capacity is a million for the basic, and it's always five times that for the advanced. Is how I've got this set up. So. We initialise one with capacity of whatever the capacity should be, the max receive, max extract correctly. 
and the energy correctly that we set them then we do the same for another one but except for the energy is just the capacity so we fill it up when we pick the block we make sure to make it receive an extract energy that's just so that the item will always be able to receive an extract energy even though the block might not be able to so it's the furnace generator that won't be able to receive energy but as an item it will be able to receive energy and all we're doing is getting the update tag from the tile entity that's just so we get all the data about the energy storage from the tile entity and now we've had to add these four methods here the get drops that just makes sure it drops the item lock machine with the update tag as a tag compound and puts it in we have to add this as the last parameter on the item stamp because it needs it as the capability mbt which will get passed on to uh, init capabilities um, right here when it calls item init capabilities it's passed on to this that's the mbt data which gets passed into this bit here um, and obviously we add that drop um, we need to add these harvest block and remove by player this just says that don't destroy the tile entity until we've dropped the item and this here just removes the tile entity after it's been harvested and finally the on block place that makes sure to place the block but it sets the max receive and max extract correctly to what it was originally in the tile entity so for the energy cell the max receive and max extract is zero block breaker well that just sets the max extract to zero it's going to leave it with a default max receive and this one just sets the max receive to zero and that lot you can see all the code for this over on github if you look here i've uh, changed the block breaker to use item block machine same with the energy cell and furnace generator that's just so that it uses the correct item block so i'm just going to go run the game now and you will see the energy item working okay so the game is loaded up so if you go inside the test world you will now be able to see the energy item working okay so let's just wait for the game to load the world shouldn't take too long because there isn't much in there now because of when i was testing and you will be able to see that um the items hello here we go i'm just gonna get rid of that there okay if we go over to jr you can see that the items now have the energy bar showing correctly and it has the color durability it shows the rf i've currently got it so it shows um the capacity i don't want it to show the capacity now i'm happy with it so that just changes based on your settings that's why i've got that set up like i have if we head over to a bit of everything you can see it here it's also got both items so they also place correctly which is brilliant um so block breaker zero you, I, it, hovering over it you can see the energy inside which is great obviously you place it with nothing it has nothing you place it with stuff in and it has it in so you can see that working there and obviously this is on the new gui system we can if we click on this you see all the colors change correctly so for energy jewels uh mega jewels and minecraft jewels eu and back to rf so the colors change quite nice i think that's quite a cool thing you can just see it in through this change um the best way to show this is with an energy cell i've got the advanced one because it's, it holds more power and if we look in here and we go to charge up this item you can see it's getting charged up and we are losing power in here and it will charge up it only holds a million rf and this holds five million so that shouldn't take too long but we can actually put obviously put this one in here now normally you can't extract from these but this is what you would expect an item to behave like it should just be able to charge and decharge it shouldn't 
go in and not charge and decharge. That's why it's set up the way it is. So let's just wait for this to charge. It shouldn't take too long. That's full. And obviously I can empty this back in and charge this up. And to prove that it works, is I tested this with actually additions, the Energizer and the Innovator. Uh, the Innovator, well that just takes energy out, fills it up, that's gone right into here, charging it up in here. And if I take this out of here and leave that one in there, we can charge this up. Which is brilliant, and this isn't just for the energy cell it works with, it works with the furnace generator. Thank you guys for watching, another like, comment and subscribe. I am out.